In this video we're going to talk about simplifying radicals and everything we're going to talk about in this video and the next video is all going to be based off a fairly simple idea that the nth root of some number raised to the n power uh, should essentially just be that base number. Uh, if you want to think about why this works, uh, recall any radical expression we can rewrite using exponents and the power inside the radicand is always the numerator and the index is always the denominator of a fractional exponent. So we can rewrite the nth root of a to the n power as a to the power n over n. And we know n over n is just 1 and a raised to the first power is just a. So essentially if we take the nth root of some number raised to the n power we should just get that number. Now there are some cases where it's slightly more complicated than that, but we'll get to that uh, here in a minute. First let's look at a couple uh, numerical examples. Uh, first off, the square root of 5 squared. Recall that a square root is index 2, and if we rewrite this as an exponent, it would be 5 to the power 2 over 2, which is just 5. Okay, so essentially what we have happening here if the power in the radicand is the same as the index, uh, the index and the power undo each other. So for similar reasons, the third root of 8 to the third power should just be 8, because the index 3 and the power 3 are going to undo each other. Okay? The fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. Now, to see why that's true, we have to think about what negative 32 is. Negative 32 is negative 2 to the fifth power. So the fifth root of negative 32 would be the same as the fifth root of this. And again, the index of 5 and the power of 5 are going to undo each other, giving me negative 2. Okay. Now always be careful working with negative numbers. Uh, this is very different than trying to find the fourth root of negative 16. Because if we think about negative 16, there's no such thing as a number to the fourth power giving me negative 16. Because hopefully you realize that any number to the fourth power is going to be positive. Okay, So there's no way I can rewrite negative 16 as a real number to the fourth power. So the fourth root of negative 16 is not going to be a real number. Okay, So if your index is odd, a negative number is okay. If your index is even, a negative number is probably not okay. If we're working with an index that's even, we have to make sure that our the number in the radicand and our final result have to be positive. Okay, If the index is odd, we don't really have to worry about sign because the radicand and the final result can be positive or negative. Okay, So if we're working with unknown quantities as opposed to uh, the first set of examples we looked like where those were known quantities, if we're working with unknown quantities, there are really two questions we need to ask ourselves. The first question we're going to have to ask ourselves is, does my answer need to be positive? Okay, And to answer that question, we need only look at the index. If the index is even, then yes, my answer does need to be positive. If the index is odd, then no, my answer does not need to be positive. Okay, And if that's the answer in your particular problem, if the answer is no, my answer does not need to be positive, then you're probably going to be done once you simplify uh, the radical. If yes, if you do have to give a positive answer, then you're going to have to ask a follow-up question. Is my answer positive? Sometimes you're going to get a positive answer, and sometimes you're not when working with unknowns. If you do get a positive answer, and you need a positive answer, then obviously you're going to be done. If you're not sure what kind of answer you've got, then we have to do something to make sure that we're giving a positive answer. And the only good way we have to do that is to use an absolute value. Okay, hopefully you remember that uh, when we take the absolute value of any number, we end up with a positive quantity. Okay, so let's just look at a couple simple examples. The square root of x squared, we would like to just say is x, because again, the index is 2, the power is 2, they should undo each other, and I'm left with x. Now this example is different from the previous examples because we don't know what x is. So we have to ask those two questions. Question number one, does my answer need to be positive? In this case, yes. My answer does need to be positive because the index is 2. So the second question is, 
is my answer positive? Okay, is this positive? Well, we don't know. We don't know if this is positive. So giving x as an answer here is not going to work because we have to make sure our answer is positive. So this is not how we're going to simplify the square root of x squared. Instead, we have to say that the square root of x squared is absolute value x. Okay. The problem is we don't know if x is positive, but we do know that the absolute value of x is positive. So this is going to be a better answer. Now compare that to the third root of x cubed. We would like to think that this works the same way, because again, 3 and 3 should undo each other. That gives me x. Now the difference is here, the index is odd, which means my answer does not need to be positive, which means we don't have to do anything. Okay? We only need an absolute value if your answer has to be positive, meaning the index is even, and if we don't know if our answer is positive. Okay? If that's the situation, you have to use absolute value. If that's not the situation, we don't. Okay? Let's look at a couple more. What would the fourth root of x to the eighth power be? Again, don't forget, we can think of these as exponents. This would be the same as x raised to the power 8 over 4, and 8 over 4 is 2. Okay? Now, it looks like we've simplified it, but before we move on, we're going to ask those two questions. Question one, does my answer need to be positive? And the answer here is yes, the index is even. If the index is even, your answer has to be positive. Second question, is my answer positive? Well, if you think about that long enough, you'll notice that this is positive. Okay? We don't know what x is, but we do know that whatever x is, once we square it, it's automatically positive. Because any real number squared is positive. Okay? So in this particular example, we needed a positive answer because the index was even, and we got a positive answer. If you need a positive answer, you get a positive answer, you're done. Okay. Now compare that to the fourth root of x to the twelfth power. Okay. Again, this would be x to the power 12 over 4, which is 3. The index is still even, which means I need a positive answer. The difference is x cubed could go either way. Okay. If x happens to be negative, then x cubed would also be negative. And we can't allow that to happen because my index was even. So giving x cubed as an answer is not going to work here. That's why I've included absolute value, because we needed a positive answer and we didn't necessarily get one. Okay? So that's kind of the train of thought you need to be in when you're working with unknowns and radicals. Now, we're going to take a look at some slightly more complicated examples. And what we're looking to do is to write these radicals in simplest form. Okay, and part of writing a radical in simplest form is making sure that all exponents in the radicand are less than the index of the radical. Okay, anytime we have exponents inside the radicand that are greater than or equal to the index, we can do some simplifying. And in fact, that's what happened in these two examples. 8 is larger than 4, which means this is not in simplest form. And same thing with this example. Anytime this power is greater than the index, you're not done. You have to do some simplifying. And another thing to look for, your exponents in the radicand, along with the index of the radical, shouldn't have any common factors, other than, of course, 1, because 1 is always going to be a common factor. So just to give you a quick, this isn't something you're going to see a lot, but let's say we had the ninth root of x to the third power. Here, 3 is smaller than 9, which means we've essentially passed uh, the first criteria, okay? But if we look at the second criteria, 3 and 9 have a common factor. So how do we simplify it? Well, it's really just as easy as rewriting it in exponential form and reducing the exponent. This would be the same as x to the power 3 over 9. 3 over 9 can be reduced to 1 over 3. And x to the 1 third power in radical form is the third root of x. So it turns out that the ninth root of x to the third, even though 3 is smaller than 9, we can still simplify it because there's a common factor. And it turns out it's the same as the third root of x. Okay? So let's look at a few more examples and kind of practice uh, taking care of this situation as well as uh, asking ourselves 
those follow-up questions to make sure we really, in fact, give an answer that works. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so the first example we're going to look at, again, just focusing on uh, this first criteria for the radical and simplest form. We're going to look at the square root of 12 a to the third power b to the fourth power. As you can see, uh, the index is 2, and we have some exponents in the radicand that are larger than 2. Okay, So how do we rectify this? Your first step is just to factor everything out, Okay, including the coefficient. Even though it doesn't look like 12 has a power greater than 2, there are factors of 12 that do have uh, a power of 2. Okay, So really what we want to do with the coefficient is do a prime factorization prime factorization of 12 is 2 squared times 3. Now, 3 is larger than 2. What we're looking for to simplify this is we're looking for factors with powers of 2. So if I have a power more than 2, I can rewrite a to the third power as a to the second power times 1 more a. Remember, when we're multiplying a's, we add their exponents together. 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, and I can do a similar thing for b to the fourth power since 4 is larger than my index of 2. b to the fourth power can be rewritten as b squared times b squared. Because what I want to do is find all these powers of 2 uh, within my radicand. Okay? Then I can rewrite my square root as the product of many square roots. Okay? Instead of the square root of this big long factorization, I can think of this as a factorization of square roots. This is called the product rule for radicals. The product rule for radicals essentially says if I have a product of square roots, or roots of any index for that matter, as long as the radicals have the same index, we can uh, take the root of the product instead of the product of the radicals. Okay, so essentially we're using the product uh, rule for radicals backwards here to rewrite uh, this square root of this factorization as a factorization of smaller square roots. Okay, and in doing that we can see that many of these can be simplified. Uh, from what we previously looked at, we know that the square root of 2 squared is just 2, we know that the square root of a squared is a, and we know that the square root of b squared is b. So essentially what happens, the, all of these factors that are raised to the second power are going to come out of the square root. Okay? So this factor of 2 comes out, this factor of a comes out, and both of these factors of b come out, because when I take the square root of something squared, I just end up with that quantity. We do not know what the square root of 3 is, because 3 is not something squared. And we do not know what the square root of a is because I don't even know if a is something squared. So the factor of 3 and the factor of a are going to remain in the square root. Uh, we cannot simplify those any further. So if we look at the square root of 12, a to the third power, b to the fourth power in simplest form, what we end up with is 2ab squared times the square root of 3a. So if you look at where we started and where we ended up, you can sort of see that our goal is to make the square root portion as simple as possible. Any factors that do not need to be in the radical, we want to get them out. And that's what it means to write a radical in simplest form. Okay, so the first example we're going to try to simplify is the third root of 54 x to the sixth power, y to the fourth power. The index here is 3, so I want to try to express this radicand. Uh, we're going to break it down into factors raised to the third power, if there are any. And then any factors raised to the third power, we will be able to factor out of this radical. So we want to start with 54. Uh, if you're not sure off the top of your head, don't be afraid to do a factor tree. 54 is 9 times 6. 9 is 3 times 3. And 6 is 3 times 2. So 54 is 3 to the third power times 2. And because we're looking for powers of 3, that's a really good way to break this one down. So instead of 54, I'm going to write 3 to the third power times 2. Now x to the sixth power. There are a lot of different ways I could express x to the sixth power. 
But again, we're looking for powers of 3, so I'm going to rewrite x to the 6th power as x to the 3rd power times x to the 3rd power. And then y to the 4th power, uh, again, 4 is larger than 3, which means I want to break this down a little bit. I want to rewrite y to the 4th power as y to the 3rd power, and then we have one more y. Okay? And now any factor raised to the 3rd power, we will factor out of the radical. Okay? And when we do so, we reduce that power because the third root of 3 to the 3rd power is just 3. So I'm going to have a factor of 3 outside the radical. I cannot simplify the third root of 2. I can simplify the third root of x cubed. That would just be x. And then the third root of this x cubed is going to be another x. So I'm going to have two factors of x or x squared. And then the third root of y to the third power is y. So I have a factor of y that I can factor out. And then this last factor of y, I do not know what the third root of that is. So that is going to stay put. So I can bring out 3x squared y, and I'm left with the third root of 2y. Okay. Any factors that you are unable to factor out of the radical are going to be in the radical when you write your final answer. Okay. Now, speaking of final answer, remember we have two questions we need to ask ourselves before we move on. Question one, does my answer here need to be positive? In this case, the index is odd, which means no, there's no reason my answer needs to be positive. So in this case, we are done. Okay? So my final answer would be 3x squared y times the third root of 2y. Okay, the next example we're going to look at is the fourth root of 48x to the eighth power, y to the fourth power, z to the second power. We're going to try to use the same process. The only difference is the index is 4, so we're going to look for factors that are raised to the 4th power. We're going to start with 48, and we'll do a factor tree. 48 is 6 times 8. 6 is 2 times 3. 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. So if we look at the factorization of 48, we have four factors of 2 and one factor of 3. In other words, 2 to the 4th power times 3. So instead of 48, I'm going to write 2 to the 4th power times 3. x to the 8th power. 8 is more than 4, which means we want to break this down. I'm going to rewrite x to the 8th power as x to the 4th power times x to the 4th power. Now I have y to the 4th power. Fourth power is exactly what I'm looking for, so I'm going to leave that alone. And then I have z to the second power. Two is less than four, so I can't uh, break that down in any way that's going to be helpful. So I'm going to leave the z squared alone as well. Okay. And then again, we're going to go through, and every factor raised to the fourth power, we're going to factor out of the radical. Any factors not raised to the fourth power are going to stay in the radical. So if we go through here, it looks like I can bring out a factor of 2 because the fourth root of 2 to the fourth power is 2. I can bring out two factors of x, so that would give me x squared. And I can bring out one factor of y, so that gives me 2x squared y. And then I'm left with the fourth root of whatever we didn't factor out, which in this case would be 3 times z squared. Okay, so it looks like we have 2x squared y times the fourth root of 3z squared. But before we move on, remember, we got to test this. Question number one we ask ourselves is, does my answer need to be positive here? And in this example, the answer to that question is yes. Okay, this has an even index, which means we have to give a positive answer. So the second question is, do I have a positive answer? So let's examine this a little more closely. 2, is 2 positive? Yes. x squared, is x squared positive? It actually is. 
Okay, I didn't tell you what x was, but no matter what x is, once we square it, that's going to be a positive number too. Any number squared is positive. Let's look at y. Is y positive? We don't know. We do not know if y is positive because I never told you what y was. So to make sure my answer is positive, I'm going to have to do something to this y to make it positive. And what we said was we're going to use an absolute value anytime that's the case. Okay? So to make sure I give an answer that works, we're going to say 2x squared times the absolute value of y times the fourth root of 3z squared. The third example we're going to look at is the square root of 375, a to the fourth power, b to the fourth power. Okay? 375 is a little bit bigger number than what we had in the first two examples, so let's do that factor tree. The first two you might have been able to break down in your head, and that's fine, but if it's something you can't factor out in your head, don't be afraid to do the factor tree. 375, it ends in a 5, so I know it's going to be 5 times something. Uh, it's actually 5 times 75. 75 is 25 times 3, and 25 is 5 times 5. So it looks like the prime factorization of 375 is 5 to the third power times 3. Now, this is a square root. This is index 2, which means I'm looking for factors raised to the second power. So expressing this as 5 to the third power times 3 isn't all that helpful. I actually want to factor this down a little bit more. I'm going to rewrite 375 as 5 to the second power times another 5 times 3. Because again, I'm looking for powers of 2 because this has an index of 2. Okay? So I have 5 to the second power times 5 times 3. a to the fourth power is the same as a squared times a squared, and b to the fourth power is the same as b squared times b squared. And now I go through, I'm going to take the square root of all of those factors raised to the second power. When I take the square root of 5 squared, that's going to give me 5. I can take the square root of a squared, which is a. The square root of a squared is another a. So I'm actually bringing out two factors of A. And same with the B. I'm going to be bringing out two factors of B. And the only thing that's going to be left here is one factor of 5 and one factor of 3, which is good for square root of 15. Our follow-up questions. Question number one, does my answer need to be positive? Just like the last example, Yes, my answer does need to be positive because this is index 2, which is even. So I have to give a positive answer. Second question, is this answer positive? 5 is positive. A squared is positive because anything squared is positive. And similarly, B squared is positive. So 5A squared B squared, even though we don't know much about A and B, we do know that 5A squared B squared is a positive number. So I do not need to make any adjustments to my final answer at all. So this is it. 5a squared b squared squared 15. All right, so hopefully that uh, is a good start. I'm going to give you two examples to try on your own. So in a second here, I'm going to ask you to hit pause. Try to simplify the two radicals on your own. And then once you think you've got it done, you can hit play. And I will give you the correct answers uh, so you can see how you did. So the first example I would like you to try is the square root of 108 a squared b to the fourth. Okay. And the second example I would like you to try is the fifth root of 32 x to the seventh power times y to the third power times z to the fifth power. Okay. I want you to try to simplify these two radicals. Go ahead and hit pause now. Work them out. And then once you think you've got it, hit play, and I'll give you the correct answers.